And welcome to our podcast, Geeks Are Wired, where we talk about video games, movies, TV, comic books, technology, and TLDR, the Internet of Things. And this week, uh, you we have Anna. Hi. And Anthony. Hello, everyone. And Tango. Hi. And John. Hello. And I'm sorry both names. <laughs> Jonathan. And Jonathan. And? Mike, last I checked. Mike, last I checked. Okay. I was like, wait, what? It's, it's a Welsh name. <laughs> <laughs> all, all one word. The, Hyphens. The, Hyphens. The cadence is important, too. Yeah. <laughs> we also have Bill. Oh, hey. Yes, and we hey. have Bill. I think you forgot yourself last time we were here. It's um, true. I remember that. <laughs> you were like, and there's somebody else. We're all just kind of sitting there going, you? <laughs> Have you thought of you yet? Well, sometimes I make other people introduce me. Ah. Sometimes. And this is Bill. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> He's got really good food here. Everybody should come. <laughs> yeah. That's why people come. You know, yes. There's actually, nobody's listening. They just, you know, get people They just come food. here for the recipes. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. I was fed. <laughs> Uh, you also can reach out to us through geeksrewired at gmail.com. You can give us a phone call at 801-896-4335. That's geek. Or you also can help support us with our Patreon page at patreon.com slash geeksrewired, where you can chat with us on our Discord page, channels, and uh, you can get the podcast today early. Along with the Patreon page, we had the Great Jedi Debate. There was a survey, or the, we and Ted did this debate about who was better the Empire or the Jedi, and who was the yeah, actual evil people. How did that turn out, Bill? That Bill won. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> was it a landslide? It was pretty close. That, uh, a whopping six people voted. That's oh wow! All right, <laughs> hmm. All right. Yeah, we've got six. We got one that here, so <laughs> we can sway the vote, folks. Well, the voting's closed though. Ah, uh, well, we can get it started again. Okay, we can make it top the up. charts. Yeah, and it was even open for anybody. I'm from Florida originally, so we recount. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I'm, I'm good with this count. The only person that isn't is not here, so uh, that happens. Uh, and, and the survey says? I won. I don't know what no that ones. means. <laughs> that means that the Jedi Council is the good guys, and the yes. Empire is still bad. The Empire is still bad, Tangle. All right, fine. <laughs> All I can say is that, you know, you need to kind of keep some of these things in check. All right, and Admiral Thrawn is the best. Admiral Thrawn is the best person in the Empire, so I gotta say that. Well, that's when he shows back up. Yeah, when he shows back up, <laughs> he's canon he's again. He's canon again. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, but didn't he wasn't he the one that kind of disappeared? As... There was some question about whether or not he was going to stay in the extended universe, but then they re-released the books. Yeah, well, and no, so... not that, but I meant. Because he was in Rebels. Oh, he was. That's and what I was talking about, the ending of Rebels. I'm I'm not certain I like Rebels because they had the chance to do a lot of really good things with mm. it. And um, it's like they kept thinking that the only people who were watching it, like it was totally geared toward four-year-olds. But then they would have like some stronger themes. So it's not for four-year-olds. But then they'd go back to the like really goofy looking stuff. And they would stop fleshing out the characters. They would hint they were going to flesh them out, and then they didn't. So I kind of, like, stepped away from Rebels at that point. Because after a little while, I was like, no, you had a shot there. That was going to be a good character. Oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, even uh, Clone uh, Clone Wars had some of those seasons where they're like, we are for adults. We are for two-year-olds. Yeah, really. (laughs) And it's like, pick an audience, man. You know, who are you selling the toys to? Um, and and that is oh, really the uh, twelve to eighteen year old boys. That's the uh, that's the audience they want to sell <laughs> well, toys to. Parents won't. Yeah, right. <laughs> then yep. there's a jump to thirty five to fifty five. I yeah. feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, but they don't care about that audience so much. Yeah, I don't know why. They're the ones with money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now now the real reason we're at the podcasting because this weekend, depending on whether you're a patron or not. Well, it may be happening right now. Is the Snake River Fandom Con? Woo! Ooh. Yay! Yes, we, we all don't sound anywhere near as excited as we probably should be. <laughs> well, it's kind of. Or is it we're last year? Yeah. Well, we we are like at that two days before con kind of thing where we're like everything is at a frenetic pace, and then it's all waiting. And 
you know, oh, we're putting these things together. Now we have to let the glue set. Oh, we're putting all these things together. Now I have to sleep. Mm-hmm. And oh, we're putting all wait, these things together. Wait. And Hold, go, go, what was oh, that thing that you said? You, don't you? Even that thing start. that you said that you do? Yeah. Sleep? No, you, yeah. no, you don't. <laughs> That's okay. You get an extra sleep for all the rest of us. Somebody <laughs> has to. <laughs> so how much sleep do you actually get then? Um, It is not much. Do you because... want it measured in seconds or? <laughs> <laughs> I slept on the plane here. <laughs> that was two and yeah. a half hours. Um, yeah, because uh, Mike is from Chicago and we're on the, um, the a chat together for all the upper management. So. I wake up at two o'clock in the morning because I just remembered something that I needed to write down or somebody I needed to talk to. And so I, uh, write something on the, on the Facebook chat for us, knowing that people are sleeping and have correctly turned off their notifications for the night. So they're not going to get woken up by my stream of consciousness. So why would we do that when you don't? And then (laughs) Mike says, all right, I'll get right on that. And it's like, what are you doing up? It's like, well, what are you doing up? And so then after a five minute exchange of that nature, uh, then we get into long winded discussions about whatever it is that we were about to be talking about. And then like, when everyone else wakes up, they have like 300 messages. Yeah. And that happens quite regularly. Far, far too yeah. often. Yeah. You catch up. You're like, uh, I'm commenting on this thing. There. Yeah. <laughs> you have to reference. You have to, you have to call back to it. And, and, uh, as you know, on the podcast uh, chat that we have, it's like when you don't look at something and you come back in, it's like, uh, I, I'm really afraid of that red number <laughs> right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cause it's, it's really important. But I appreciate that you guys are coming in and, uh, doing the interviews on stage, uh, of the celebrities and guests that we're bringing in. Um, so that, that's a great thing. I had you, it was funny. I had you, uh, interviewing Katrine on Friday on mix stage. And then I had you interviewing her again for your live podcast. And I went, well, that's going to be redundant. <laughs> so, so I went ahead and moved her since she was going to be over there on your podcast. Anyway, I wanted her to, to have the live audience more than the, um, well, other live audience. Yeah, <laughs> all the live audience. I want her to have the sustained live audience. See, you know, actually, that, that I threw it off on the side. There. See, we, we even have our nice little yeah. who we're talking about. Yep. Yep. Who we're talking to. Yep. We've got extra, uh, like uh, Christopher Escalante. He is a composer for um, the, well, he did the Utah Pops Orchestra. Oh, nice. He composed for that. He composes for, um, uh, well, Salt Lake City has a really thriving film industry that Jonathan can speak to a bit there. Um, and, uh, he composes music and soundtracks for it. So, um, but Jonathan does makeup, which is amazing. So we're going to throw to Jonathan here so you can hear his lovely melodious voice. So is my voice. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, um, we do have a thriving film industry down in Salt Lake City. Um, and actually all across Utah, we get a ton of film projects that go into Provo and then, um, which is about, I want to say 30 to 40 minutes south of Salt Lake City. Um, frequent projects throughout Ogden, which is about 20 minutes north of Salt Lake City. And then, of course, Salt Lake City proper. But um, there are kind of two crowds of people that I find really, when they hear Utah and they film, and film there, they're like, oh, Utah, that's a weird place to make a movie. That or they go, oh, Utah, I'm shooting there next week. So <laughs> yeah. um, there's no in between. <laughs> anything from anything from we have the tiniest little student budget films because I mean I've taught at um, Salt Lake City Community College, the U of U, um, the Weber State, all just different film classes and different film courses that I've gone in and done uh, makeup demos for, and then they all have their film students that make you know movies, and then they get out of school and they make more movies, and then of course we have the Sundance Film Festival which comes through. And then every other month, there's another some sort of you know, forty eight hour film festival, or we've got the uh, the Demon Chaser, which is this month. And so, I mean, good example in October, I'm typically booked out, and it's not for what you'd think as a makeup artist. Oh, he's going to be booked out because of Halloween. No, in October, I have all of the student deadlines for all of the universities, and so they're all making, they're all shooting their their final films. And I've got the Demon Chaser Film Festival, and there's another horror film festival that are all done in the month of October. And so every weekend, every day, you're shooting something. Um, yeah, and then on top of that, we've also got all the huge big budget pr- budget projects that come in and shoot. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean used the uh, salt flats 
for one of their oh, scenes. Yeah. I mean, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was all shot there. Westworld, yeah, actually. actually. Yeah, actually Westworld is, uh, is, uh, Westworld is being shot in southern Utah. Um, and so they're coming back for production and, uh, what else have you got? What is the big, there's this, there's out, the outpost is being shot right now. Um, Andy Mack, it's a children's show on Disney. Um, I've been able to go and work on that. Uh, like we've, we've got tons and tons and tons of things going on and it's just, it's just, everyone's got their own little crowd, but there's always something being shot in Utah. It's oh, yeah. cheap. It's cheap to shoot in Utah, and we've got... <laughs> I'll bet there are a lot of tax breaks, too. Yes, yeah. that's from what I hear. There's tons of tax, tax breaks and reasons to come to Utah. It's it's just a great... That, and in the same state, you can have mountainous terrains. You can have the shores of Ireland. You can have endless deserts of Arabia. You can have cliffs. You can have uh, the redstone that we have down <laughs> south. You can be in frigid Arctic temper- you know, it, environments all within a couple of hours of its, each other. So it's endless in what you can shoot there. Yeah. Having lived there for years, decades, I can attest to every single one of those things. <laughs> you know, sometimes you cross the street and now you're in a new climate. So, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. I, I've seen that actually where you see the buildings and like on one side of the building, it's just the foot of snow and then everyone's like frozen. And then you look at the other side of the building and everyone's in t-shirts and sprawled across the nice green grass. We call it March to June. <laughs> March to June, you may not know what you need to prepare for, but it's there. It's nice. Yeah. No, I've, I've heard a lot about that. It's all, it's all be in the middle. I have never filmed there, but I understand there's a lot of my favorite movies and shows for there. <laughs> That's awesome. I had no idea that the, there was that much filming going on there. Oh, I knew there was some, and I knew about the film. The what you, Sundance. Sundance. I knew about yeah. Sundance, but even though I didn't know the name. <laughs> I didn't know the name. I didn't know that that many big projects were yeah. out there. That's only a tiny list because it's yeah. we've got the salt flats and they and it's endless. You know, just you look out and it's just white salt as far like as you the, can see, mm-hmm. and so it's a really beautiful place to shoot that. And we've got a lot of cool places to put sets and actual sets and uh, multiple sound stages out here. Um, and so, I mean, like Andy Mac. Andy Mac is shot all over the valley. Um, you've got. There's a huge, what would you call it? It's not medieval. The LDS Church owns a huge set that they shoot all of their stuff on that is used for fantasy productions as well. And it's just an entire Babylonian city that is out in Utah. Um, We've got the uh, Aerostorm, which has several different huge fantasy sets that that they have designed and created and shot in and... I mean, I've I don't I've lost count of how many different sound studios I've been to or seen or know that people work with. Yellowstone also. Yellowstone is a big production that was shot and is shooting currently out there. Here, yes, out there. I'm not in Salt Lake right now. Yeah. We're close um, enough. It's <laughs> close enough. It's about Hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Two or three from here. Two. Two. Yeah. One, if you can. You do guys it right. literally just yeah, drove they it. Just how far? Drove oh, this afternoon. Two. It's a two-hour drive. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I've done it regularly. I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours and 34 minutes from his door. <laughs> yeah, but you got to keep in mind that there was traffic. Yeah. <laughs> you guys had traffic on the way up here? <laughs> Depending well, on when well, you drive. Yeah, we do because we live in Idaho. And so right now our construction crop is really about ready to harvest. That's disgusting. You, know, you, can, you can tell, you know, in the early spring they plant the little cones. And then, you know, they really sprout. So you get the little thin ones. And that, that's when they're like really like starting to grow. The adolescent and, and stage. It, yeah. And, it, and now we're at that barrel stage. Oh, no. So, so we're going to be able to harvest those like really soon. You know, it's going to be cool. I think at the end of October is pretty much when they do the barrel harvest and then they plant the geese crop. So, I bet people are so excited crop? for that. They literally the stop crop is, in the streets to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the geese crop is anytime you go by any field anywhere. Mm-hmm. After the harvest. And, yeah. After the harvest, there are thousands and thousands of Canadian geese. It looks okay. like they just, you know, planted geese. And it, it will be like that for months. And then you get your, so then you get your winter. Um, and it may, the geese crop may or may not be a winter geese crop. And then, in the spring, you get them again. So it's like, oh no, that was, they were dormant over yes. the winter. Yeah. And right. now we've got a new crop Surprise. of peas. And we even saw a harvester going through and harvesting and they were like seagulls. <laughs> and they had, and it was like seagull, seagull, seagulls. And, and then where the, the thing was driving by, the, the 
they were up in the air and then they came right back down mm-hmm. where it was. And it was, and it just was the weirdest thing. It's like, oh, they are resisting harvesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it looked a lot like they were harvesting seagulls and we're like, this That's is what, what we've always been talking about. <laughs> but about Snake River Phantom Con. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so one of the people that we have here with us tonight is um, Mike. He is in charge of the vendor hall. So um, last year he had like a lot of really positive experiences with the vendors. And so we had, wanted to ruin it this year yes, for we him. Wanted, mm-hmm. no, but um, he was, he was saying that he had some really positive um, uh, feedback from the vendors. And then today he went to our, uh, official hotel, which is the La Quinta. And go ahead and talk about what you experienced at the La Quinta today. Walked in and, and immediately she just who loved was, um, Who was it? Katie. Mm-hmm. Katie, the sales director, just loved us. Like, I've never actually been given like a full tour of the entire. Hello? Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Eat your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pink and fluffy. <laughs> Snowballs are not good in this season. I was going to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we walked in and got like the full VIP tour of the entire hotel. And she was very excited for us to be there. She showed us all the suites and all the upgrades and tried to convince us to rent out her the, the event rooms there for next year. And um, most of their staff is going to be in attendance at the con this weekend. So <laughs> And the mermaids are going to be there at their pool. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and the La Quinta oh, nice. was really, really happy at... The fact that the Salt Lake mermaids? Yeah, the mermaids of the Great Salt Lake. That thing? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, they're going to be in, in the um, the La Quinta's pool because they're open 24 hours. Nice. Which I don't usually see in hotels where the pool and jacuzzi yeah, never that's closes. Pretty unusual. Mm-hmm. I think if it's inside, they're not too bad about it. Yeah, if it's inside, they're not too bad. But Some. Yeah. I've seen ones that were very, very particular. Yeah, and if we, I'm in that same boat. I've never seen one. Um Never seen one that has had been open past ten. Oh. Um, another quick note on the mermaids and then the the the, ama- the amazingness of the Quinta here um, in uh, Pocatello is so I, I make mermaid tales and as I've been getting deeper and deeper into the the mermaid societies and all that sort of stuff and the different pods they have throughout the country, one of the bigger issues is finding people that actually allow you to use their pools and their bodies of water to swim in. So it's like. It's almost like throwing, you know, throwing a fish to a bunch of seagulls where they all jump on top of it and they're so excited. Is the second again. somebody's <laughs> like, the second someone's like, hey, this public pool will let us swim. And then everyone's like, oh my goodness, okay, we got to do shoot. So the fact that we walk in there like, oh, we're going to have the mermaids here. And, you know, she's like, she goes, oh, well, only on one condition. We're like, what? She's like, you've got to tell me so I can have my daughter come and see. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is so, so rare because most of the time you go to swim or you go to like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, you know, go swim and we're going to put our tails on. They they are extremely strict and it's like no you can't do that you know there's no costuming there's no tails there's no um, monofins are actually not illegal to use but are against the rules in a lot of different mm. public swimming areas and any sort of oh, pool. I can see some liability. So yeah, yeah. There's, they, they're afraid of the yeah. liability issues, but um, it's can so I get a so nice to of see a monofin. A, um, a I monofin it's one is fin. you know how you know how flippers are your feet independent. The mm-hmm. monofin is them put together. So okay, the um, but I figured, but I didn't know. Mono yeah. means one. Well, I got <laughs> that part. A fin is means something that's the on end a of fish. Something. No, fin is the end. Oh, of the something. end of something. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, oh, don't worry. We've been asked to ending. explain lots of things we've talked about on this podcast, so it's all good. Yeah, it's a good better idea. this way. Yeah. yeah, and then um, at the Mac, obviously, is where all the vendor, why well, everything mm-hmm. is this year. Um, I've I've been a vendor for sixteen years. I've never been to a con where. We had 98% of the vendors re-register immediately. Oh, nice. Dang. For the next year. Um, when we did open registration for vendors and artists, we had four tables available. Oh. Which is really, really w- rare. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's, usually it's only That's like awesome. 40 to 50% will register. And mm-hmm. last year there was a line. And How long was the line waiting list this year? We For vendor side, we had 43 or 44 vendors. And artists... It's close to 100 at a point. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. The artist tables, I think we only had one artist table at the beginning of the season for open yeah. registration. Nice. Yep. The vendors awesome. were all very happy with us last year. So. Yay. Yeah. That's always good. It was an incredible event. It was so much fun. It was an incredible you event. It was so thing. much. If I had to be by the by the uh, snowball looking thing, it'd be by the great <laughs> thing. It was so much. It was so so much fun. I mean, the event center took really good care of us. Um, of course, Tangle. And Mike 
and oh my goodness, I've known you for years. What's your John? name? John. John. <laughs> That's why. Right. You know, Jonathan, you know, Jonathan. That should be easy for you to remember. <laughs> you know how often it is that somebody goes, "Oh, what's your name?" <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, you, you, even better when you yeah. are trying to like play it off. You're like, how do you spell that? Oh, I do that all the time. I look at. I, I'm so good at it now that I'm like, okay. So actually, I just want to make sure that I get this right in my contact information. I want you to spell out your first and last name, um, and I just s- and then I have them write it Mike. down on my phone. I'm like, M I K. What's a Mika? Mika. Mika Murray. Is no, that how you that? Mike Murray. <laughs> at that point, you hope Jessica. they have a complicated last name, and then you find out it's Smith. Yeah. yeah, or farmer, or, yeah, or farmer. So I worked briefly I in a gym a for a little while, and I'll tell you this: is maybe it's just Utah, maybe it's everywhere. There's something about the people in Utah that they will take the simplest name mm-hmm. and they will spell it in the weirdest way, and that gets so frustrating because, like, Welcome when you work Chicago at the front well. desk, yeah. when you work at the front desk, and they're like, "Oh," and you're like, "Hey, can I get your name, Ashley? Would you spell that?" It's Ashley, and you're like, "Okay, whatever. Would you please spell that?" And they're like, "Fine." A S H E I G H E E, and you're like, no. <laughs> you're you're fired. And then they give you that they give you that snobby like you should know how to spell my name. It's Brittany. X three Y. I don't work at the front desk anymore. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay. That's probably safest. Yeah. <laughs> And this is what our life is like here at uh, Snake River Fan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bottom line, amazing place. The staff mm-hmm. was wonderful. Everything was taken care of. I mean, we even had the lady at the the front, the uh, doing the, the, not the catering, what's it called? The uh, con- not condiment stand. Oh, the, 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 the uh, continental uh, con- breakfast? No, it's concessions. The, concessions. Yes. Concessions. The <laughs> concessions. She would come through and she's like, do you want a cookie? And I'm like, I really want a cookie. And then she'd make, she'd come back and she'd check up on me because I'd go for nice. coffee. So I'd go for coffee, but then she'd see that I'd get back to back makeups all day. And so she started sending over her daughter to bring me coffee and a cookie. And then I would send her daughter oh. back with five bucks. Yeah. And so it's like, I have never been treated so well that at a convention. Actually, that, it was that's incredible. Awesome. Yeah. yeah that's, the important question. Yeah. What kind of cookie was it? Delicious. They were partially cooked sugar cookies. Ooh. And then I also got a special cinnamon bun with butter that they did special just for me because they knew I liked melted butter. Because oh, <laughs> melted butter is the best. Especially <laughs> when it's on a hot cinnamon bun or yep. cookie or in coffee or, or <laughs> just plain yep. from a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 Fork yeah. or spoon. I use a straw. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? That's terrible for the environment. <laughs> No, he uses a metal straw. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your own personal. No. <laughs> we got eight of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, very much pride ourselves on providing the best convention experience for our attendees, our guests, our staff across the board. We've been to some really crappy shows, and we know what it's like to be the lesser guest. Mm. You know, you've got you go to a show where you've got. Uh, someone like, uh, let's say Jason Momoa. He is going to get the best treatment possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're just a book author, there, oh, you get the second green room where, where you've got sandwiches that have been out all day if you want to eat them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've been there. We've done What's that. What type of sandwich? Have... <laughs> <laughs> the worst uh, I believe, possible kind. I believe it was um, supposed to be turkey, but I cannot either confirm nor deny based on the taste. I, uh, I, I, I figured it was uh, like a, the, the egg sandwich or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't even eat that. I, I think I might have tried the egg salad sandwich if only because I want those worms that Fry got. Yeah. But, exactly. yeah. um, anyway, so we've had those experiences. So we, we don't believe that there's a lesser guest. And so we've done our best to make sure that all of our guests get the best treatment possible. Um, and that reflects with our attendees and our staff and everybody across the board. So what's different about this year in comparison to last year as far as like the lineup of different programs and everything that you guys have going on? There's a lot that's different stemming from the fact that we've reduced it from three venues down to one. Um, last year we had the Red Lion and the Clarion and the Mech. This year we're all at the Mech. And so that's changed a lot of what we can do. Tangle? Yeah. The uh, the main reason for that was because attendees were saying they didn't know that stuff was going on at the other venues. And so they missed out on a lot of programming. So they said, please have it just at one place. And we're like, you don't understand Pocatello. There's no place to hold <laughs> a convention in Pocatello. So... Um, then we found out that the uh, place that 
that does the pipe and drape rental at Signature Rentals that they had festival tents. And we went, well, I suppose we could try that. So, uh, but we're going, this is September, it's late September in Pocatello. It's, that's not going to be safe. And then we started looking into the almanac to find out how bad the weather is traditionally. And it's like, no, it's actually fine. It's mild. So we're like, oh, well, I guess we can. So then we got um, a 40 by 60 pavilion that we have access to. The Grand Pavilion. Uh, the Grand Pavilion. And we've got four 20 by 20 tents. And then we have a 16 by 22 octagonal tent. So with all of that, we were able to, I mean, otherwise the mech was going to be like, you know, five or six panels, maybe eight yeah. panels a day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Eight panels a day, then the evening stuff, and then that was it. And after 360 plus hours last year, breaking it down to like 30 was not acceptable. Yeah. I can't stand that. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, having the, the festival tents means that we can have all of the stuff that we did last year. There was a lot that we can do. I mean, we still had to pare down, but, um, we've got the, um, uh, coup is coming back and they're doing the mega dungeon stompers. Um, we've got, a a new event called the Splendid Teapot Racing, which if you're into steampunk at all, it is you you attach a teapot to a remote control car and you run through an obstacle course. And it is apparently it started at a steampunk convention in New Zealand and just went nuts. Everybody in the steampunk community was like going, oh, are you going to have these? Because this is a new thing. Right. So we're like, OK, Sure. <laughs> I I have no idea what you're talking about, but then we talked to our you know our steampunk friends in Salt Lake, and they went, "Oh yeah, can we do that this time?" We're like, "Yeah, there. we'll give you <laughs> a special tip. Make it so you have to do the work. Yeah, though. you have to do it, but we will totally make a spot for it. So we've so, got a course set up for the teapots. By the way, bribing the judges is expected. Yeah, it's actually part um, of the game. Hey. So we're like, anybody want to be a judge? And and you know, Alison Argon was going, uh, yeah. There, you know? There's a uh, a reward for the most dastardly rogue. Yeah. So the more cheating and bribing you do, the more likely you are to get that award. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a prize. So even if you don't win overall, you can at least win. Yeah, there, we like, got lots of prizes. Yeah. So I, have a, I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. One, is the teapot full? <laughs> oh dang no unfortunately no. i would be so mean at that i would want the teapot to be full and at the end of the judging i'd want to try the tea to make sure the tea was still of good flavor properly <laughs> brewed and hot and if it wasn't I'd... maybe we'll put you on the on the judging list I, like, I was like all right, that idea. i can just see that i walk and i'm like all right now it's time to try the tea and they're like what tea and i mean <laughs> none of you guys put tea in your stuff <laughs> This is against the rules. Points off. That's why I was curious. Is there any judging positions open? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, honestly, what we want is we want people to to build the racers yeah, and, we need and racers. give their tries. Right. Um, but cool. but yeah, it's it's there's even going to be a, a a teapot building, uh, a teapot racer building uh, workshop in case someone like has the stuff and go. Okay, I've got the teapot. I've got the remote control car. What do I do with it? Um, and, and yeah, these guys will like, here, this is how you put this together. That's really so. Cool. One yeah. of the other it's going to be pretty like neat. I know you guys are like, okay, I'm going to hit the DI. I'll be back in the Yeah, morning. exactly. Uh, you um, have it's going to be a blast. The, yeah. The so the you do have to provide your own car. Yep. Uh, you do. And teapot. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so one of the other big changes that we've made from last year is we had the Harry Potter room last year, but, uh, lawsuits have been starting. And so uh -huh. Harry Potter has been a little bit litigious. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, you know what? Harry is not the only wizard out there. He's yeah. not even the only wizard named Harry that yes. I can think of <laughs> off the top of my head. Yeah. So we've expanded it to the wizarding world as a whole. And so we've, we're doing stuff on Harry Dresden and we're doing stuff on, uh, Merlin and Gandalf, you know, we've got and, Gandalf and all of the, any wizard you can think of is included in the magic and, uh, any, you know, just open it up to fantasy in general. Yep. For the, um, for one of the things that we're doing is we're, speaking of that, we're doing a steam and magic party on, uh, Friday. Um, we've got the cosplay prom that is Friday night in the mech, but during the time that they are setting up after the panels are, uh, are done, um, they need time to set up for the, for the prom. So we got to clear away the tables, the bleachers mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Well, um, we don't want the kids to be bored. So we've got the wizarding, uh, people, 
doing games and then we have the mermaids doing siren lip sync so so you don't actually have to learn to sing or be able to sing you just have to be able to you know rock that song from hercules and then um or and then, Moana. Yeah. yeah. Or Moana. And we're, there's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, ISU physics department is sending over a team to do magic and uh, some fun stuff like that. Right. They're going to have a test run of the uh, the teapot racing so people can see what that's like. And that's going to be going on from uh, 7 to 9 mm-hmm. so that people, you know, with little kids can kind of get them tired out before they take them home. So that's going to be nice. Right. So uh, And also video game. Yeah. Still be going at that time yep. Too. The video game stuff is like really, really up on there. I really, there's a part of me that's going, I need to remove the gaming tables from the list because we don't have the list of who all is running games. Uh. But there are a lot of like tabletop that are people are, are DMing games over the weekend. Um, there's going to be some magic card stuff too. But we've got four fighting game t- uh, tournaments mm-hmm. going on that we didn't have last year. One of them uh, is the Tekken tournament. As you can see, that's on Friday. And the Tekken tournament, um, Lisa Wilkerson is one of our uh, gaming guests, and she does the voice of Nina Williams in Tekken. And so for the prize for winning the Tekken tournament is you get to play her uh, yeah. in, so in the final. She has taken her role as Nina Williams very seriously <laughs> and learned to play as Nina in the oh, yeah. game. She, so she's awesome. good. Nice. Yeah, she, not... she trash talks as <laughs> Nina. So yes. you're like, you're sitting there fighting and Nina is over here in your ear. Like, <laughs> and it's so weird. You know, people are going, oh my God, that's, so, that's freaking me out. So, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. She said she's not necessarily good, but she knows how to, how to game the system. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to talk to her about it because we're going to interview her. Yes. Oh, yes. For our podcast. And Liesl is just an absolute doll. Yeah, like, she really you, is. You will love her. And and she's very elastic faced. She's it's she's got the, one of those very expressive faces and when she does something it just it lights up entirely. <laughs> You'll like her a lot. Yeah, she uh she's actually spent a lot of time living in Japan. And so as you know, it, Japanese people are tend to be very reserved and and uh stoic. And she is not <laughs> and so you should ask her about uh, interactions where she gets nervous around Japanese people because her stories are hilarious. Yeah. I'll definitely take note of that. I've also been to Japan myself, like for my honeymoon. <laughs> and so and I've I, I also took Japanese class for like the last three years of mm-hmm. college. So, uh, yeah, I. I would find it really interesting to actually interview her and just kind of find out more about that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, she, she's, uh, she's a hoot. We are actually very lucky to have her. Uh, this y- weekend, for the last six years, she has been at another convention in California. Uh, in California as a translator for their Japanese guests. Wow. And so this year she said, no, I want to go do this one instead and brush them off. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the reason for that is because she's moving back to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So after this, we're not going to see her in the States for a while. So I'm really glad to have her. She's a good friend of ours, and yeah. we're really excited about that. That is awesome. Um, let's see. what you, you asked about changes. What other things have we... Uh... Well, we had to pare down because the the space. Yeah. So we have the artists and authors in the one place again. Um, and so you're going to have uh, author uh, workshops and stuff like that, but... Uh, one of the things we've got that we don't have from last year is first pages. Last year, we had a lot of authors teaching people how to get their books started, how to build their worlds, how to, you know, this is how you write your characters. And then we took, they took it from getting it out of your brain to getting it into a publisher and the, the, the whole steps all the way through for three days. So the stuff that they're doing now is, is follow up. It's like, okay, guys, you like got everything we could teach you last year. Show us what you done. And so first pages is exactly that. It's, it's all about, um, give us your first three pages. We will read them and you do it anonymously. You know, everybody puts it in a stack and then they all get shuffled up and the people read them and they go, okay, so here's what I see. And because it's anonymous, you're not, getting you're getting true feedback because they're not like they're worried that they're going to hurt your feelings or Mm -hmm. something like that but they're not they're not jerks about it because what they care about is you've taken it this far now let's go ahead and take it to the refining step and that's a really big deal and christine taylor butler she was one of our guests 
last year. And she is the one that she said, this is what I want to do this year because we had so many people that really got involved last year. And I really want to see what they've done with it. You know, what have you done with the stuff that we learned? So I'm really excited about that. Um, we have something that we didn't have before, which is a discussion on nerdcore, which is nerd music by nerds. So if you if you've ever is heard it of, for of nerds too? yeah, um, if, uh, if you've ever and heard, others, we're, we're not we're not you know picky, <laughs> but like you've all heard of nerd rock, you know that even Superman had a day job song that you get you know the ads for if you don't have premium <laughs> on YouTube. So um, yeah, I paid for the family account. I don't get yeah. commercials. <laughs> Are you talking about like bands like Harry and the Potters and the Flanders yeah, and, and stuff, stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. They're okay. specifically, okay. Yeah. 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 So the nerd core, like um, Scorch the Earth is, is going to be playing at the uh, VIP dinner and Scorch the Earth um, got my vote immediately because one of their songs is about uh, Dark Souls. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that was like, all right. Yeah, you're in. Um, but they were also, um, Von Perry was part of Perpetual Notion last year. And so he was really fantastic. He got very involved and once again, really wanted to be a part of stuff. So we were quite excited, um, to, uh, to have them premiering here at the, uh, at the con. This is the first time we've had Scorch the Earth, but we really like their, their stuff. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I haven't heard of them. I've heard of like, you know, Nightcore or all the other random mm-hmm. music. Yep. I guess I didn't, like, we even worked with somebody before. We used to have a sound, like, I'm a nerd and proud of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is our podcast. Yep. We had a lot of issues with YouTube. <laughs> it's like, I have all the rights. Every week I post the, uh, the podcast, and it would take two days of me arguing with YouTube, going, I have rights to play the song, which means any chance of making money is gone. Uh-huh. So we pulled it, unfortunately. Yep. But still, so, yeah, this says, this could be awesome. Yep, they're they're pretty neat. They're going to be playing. Um, we're doing a, kind of a a late night talk show kind of thing uh, format for introducing people to the guests at opening ceremonies. So that is actually going on at the a VIP party because we needed to have programming. And it was after I got all the program filled up, I went. Oh, I didn't put in opening ceremonies. Okay. <laughs> so what can we do about that? <laughs> and, and it ended up being, you know, at the VIP dinner, they get introduced to folks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was so fun. what, what time is that actually starting and what are, is it all held at the Mac Center? Yes. yes. Everything is at the Mac from top to bottom. So, um, on Thursday, if you have pre-registered, if you've bought your tickets online, you can come in at, I believe it's four on thursday and get your tickets you know you can pick up your badges and if you are are a vip there will be a uh, party where you get to sit down with the guests and talk to them and stuff like that Um, there will be a dinner available if you are interested in that you can actually go on the website and uh, and get the dinner you can also um, buy it at the door but it's not included. It's just, you know, it's a party for you to hang out. It's just there will be food available. And um, Scott C. Brown and Andy Dopieraski are going to be the hosts for the uh, onstage presentation. And they were in um, the Dead Gentleman Productions. They do a lot of that. The Gamers, the Gamers 2, Darkness Rising, Gamers yeah. 3, uh, yeah. uh, Dark Journey Dungeons. Quest. Dark Dungeons, Dark Journey, Dungeons Quest. Journey Quest. So they do a lot of stuff out of Seattle. So they've got a lot of uh, uh, IMDb credits under yeah. their belt that way. That's really cool. I um, believe last year we mentioned we talked to you guys a little bit about McSterling Thong, RL McSterling Thong. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so for a long time, Scott C. Brown was the face of RL McSterling wow. Thong. Yeah. Um, and so if you ask him about it, he will definitely. Uh, He'll talk about it Laugh. and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um. In fact, we actually have, um, as part of the stuff for the VIP bags, uh, we are um, including a book of the latest uh, R.L. McSterling Thong, which uh-huh. I believe is a screaming cod piece. You know, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> so you're going to awesome. yeah. get that. So that's kind of neat. Mm. But yeah, you can, uh, uh, after that, after the uh, dinner part and the uh, show is part, part is over, at about nine, eight thirty to nine, you can, if you have a ticket, um, you can come in and even if it's not a VIP ticket and listen to Scorch play for the next hour and a half, do a little mini concert just for you guys. 
So they are awesome folk. We really like uh, having all of them. So, um, and then after the concert's over, they are going to be out front in the lobby doing uh, autographs and selfies and things like that. So one thing I will let, I will say because you know Tangle's been saying it all weekend or all week and uh, all of this is on our website. Yes. Look at the website. Look at the website. Look at the website. Yeah. So many people do. The app. Do you still sell tickets? <laughs> yeah. Are you selling tickets online? I don't know. Have you checked our website? Yeah. Well, so, so, the hey, the website that? is srfandomcon.com. So yeah, even with you know. Me and social media have been having, you know, our yeah. differences. Well, that's I've a whole other topic. I've been getting yeah. the emails, and sure. I've been going to the website, so I've been able to update everything. Mm-hmm. And Excellent. Yep. Thank you so much. I worked really hard on that, so I'm really glad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I Tangle put it on has a... done a fantastic job on the website this year. Everything you want to know is out there. You just need to look. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. So we, we still want to talk about the things we're doing. Yeah. I don't want to look. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I put it on black so you're not waking up everybody in your oh. room, you know? <laughs> That's yes. so nice. Black, yes. on, black on white is so e- much <laughs> easier on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know what else to, to talk. I mean, I all, of the, all of the you got panel something? descriptions and everything you are on something. there. You've got something. We're going to take a break. All right, yes. All right. We're going to uh, have Captain Bangles talk. We have James this week talking about some of the good comic books coming out and their stories. So with that, we'll be right back. Hi, this is James from Captain Miggles Comic Cove. Uh, here to talk to you about what's coming out on October 3rd, 2018. Normally I talk about more mainstream titles, DC, Marvel. Let's get in some of the more independent stuff. Like Image has coming out issue 4 of the Magic Order. As a book that everybody should be reading. Netflix is going to develop this into a series, number one. This is on issue four of the series, but the first three issues are actually not that hard to find currently. Beautiful artwork, and it's a story about a magic order that will assassinate, that will hide everything they can and make people disappear. It's great, it's wonderful, and very imaginative. And not to mention incredibly dark. If you're wanting a good tale to read, that is the highest of recommendations to read. It does get a bit weird at times, but do not let that stop you. Another title to check out. This one should be a big hit for Image as well. It's called Blackbird. First issue comes out that week. It's written by a fan favorite writer named Sam Humphreys, who did some great story arcs with Harley Quinn and Nightwing. And with very down-to-earth artwork by Jim Bartel. It's a neo-noir fantasy where the main character, Nina Rodriguez, is positive that there's a magic world ruled by a ruthless cabal that's just hiding below the veneer of Los Angeles. Problem is, everybody thinks she's crazy. She's definitely not crazy, and there are people out to get her for it. So... That is another one that everybody should be checking out. It's very down to earth, very good artwork. But again, magic's involved. It's going to get weird. The other title I want to talk to you guys about is A Walk Through Hell. Since October is month for Halloween, I wanted to go over a great horror title that is just not just gaining traction, but is just incredibly dark psychologically and everything it's just great and the last title i want to talk about is a great if you're nostalgic for the 80s rainbow bright is coming back through dynamite comics with an adventure for children and adults alike classic character rainbow bright brings a little color to your life wisp and willow are best friends who live in a small town inseparable until one night wisp discovers something is stealing the color from the world to escape their gla- grasp wisp must use her wits and help a new friend from somewhere else then the adventure begins jeremy whitley from my little pony and unstoppable loss from marvel and artist Brittany williams who did the artwork for patsy walker and goldie Vance, take you on a great tale of nostalgia and fun and happiness. That is my picks for the week. And we're back. 
Hello, everyone. Hi and, again. Hi. And we have more news besides Captain Bengals. Yes. So uh, one of the things we've got this year, oh, uh, to finish out because I was reminded, the dinner opens for the public at 6 p.m. on tomorrow. Well, on tomorrow. Unless uh, you're our one patron. They, they won't know. The, this will yeah. post afterwards. So yeah. they'll be okay. too late. You're too late anyways. People. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> you missed still. out. But the thing of it is, is that next year, it's still going to be the same way. No. So on Thursday, we have the meet and greet dinner. Um, and there's going to be activities and fun stuff going on there too. One of these days, I think I'm going to have it be like the build your own lightsaber stuff. I mean, all the kids' activities are so awesome <laughs> mm-hmm. looking. Have you seen that list? You know, oh, look at the, the wand making. I was like, yeah, yes. the wand making, mm-hmm. the build your own lightsaber, Franken stuffies, Franken stuff. Oh my god, the mm-hmm. Franken stuffies. So Kids go wild for Franken. Franken stuffies. For those of you who don't know what that is, um, and we will be doing several of these events throughout the year because they're so popular. But uh, you take stuffed animals that have been dismantled, <laughs> and you get to recreate. Whatever kind of stuffed animal you want so to make, like build a bear, but yeah, but with you but know creepier, other animal yes. parts, okay, cool. right, way more fun. So, yeah. so yeah, you get to put as many heads as you want on it, and you know, yep. do you think that a bear needs octopus tentacles? Yeah, go yes. for it. Yes, everything <laughs> needs tentacles. Yeah. So it's it's such a big day, and we have so many stuffed animals right now that have been shredded <laughs> to pieces, and arms, and legs, and horns, and faces and tails oh yeah all over the place because they get to like choose and at first they're like oh my god i can't believe you did this to this bear it's like yeah but now you can put an alligator head on it well <laughs> okay <laughs> screw then. that yeah. <laughs> you know? then the wheels start turning it is exactly. and they start seeing that like we had five boxes like we had two boxes and two large outdoor garbage bags full of stuffed animals that were already dismantled uh, during an event last October. And that was at the mall. And uh, they were gone in 30 minutes. We had 300 people show up to that thing. It was nuts. And we're like, you know, going out, getting stuffed animals from all the stores and just shredding them Mm -hmm. to pieces and no one is more creative than little kids yeah or I monstrous agree. nor nor monstrous <laughs> well that, that's a whole nother topic for another so, day so so yeah so the franken stuffies which has got a two-hour block on sunday is just enormous and we are not sure she heidi who is the person running it said that it's two hours for that and that is all Period. She's not going to run it over into more because, frankly, she doesn't think with 15 bags of stuffed animals, she's got more than two hours of <laughs> stuffed animals to make. Uh, she's she might actually run out of materials. She yes. might, even though it's only two hours. She might. And, I mean, we have bags and bags and bags. We've got trunks full, like Buick trunks full of stuffed animals. It's true. So once they put it together, like, how how do they actually, like – assemble or just oh, like yeah, stick you, you them get, together. You get, um, you get like those, uh, you know, those kids um, sets for yarn mm-hmm. where they've the got this like point. big weird plastic needle kind of thing. Well, yeah. So you stitch those together, stitch the legs wherever you want to put them or arms or heads or whatever. And then yeah, it ties off. They, this is not a daycare. So you're not just dumping your kids there and leaving. The parents are involved. So if they in need fact, they're to, required to be involved. yeah, they're required mm-hmm. to be there. So if the parents want to do the stitching, you know, if you got somebody who really wants to make it look nice, but you know, having the yarn stitched through with big old stitches, style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. You know that that actually works out pretty cool. Right. So um, and then once they get it, they just you know it's done and they take it home with them, and they seem to really do well. In fact, the reason why we had to do the the one in October was because we had some at um at the con last year and the kids came home with these and their brothers and sisters saw them <laughs> and, and they were too. like where do i get one of these and builder bear is like we don't do that that's gross <laughs> <laughs> And we're like, really? Because you are missing out, buddy. Especially and this time of year? Oh, oh any yeah. time of year. Oh, my well, gosh. Well, time, yes. But this time I... I know. Oh, that, yeah. the, the October thing was so well attended. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. And um, 
And so, yeah, we're, we're fully expecting that with, you know, 15 bags of stuffed animals, she, she thinks, oh, I'm only doing this for two hours. So we'll have some left over for October. And I'm like, going, boy, you're delusional, lady. No. There is no chance we're going to have those things though. Cause they go through them like crazy. It's a very popular well, event. It's a yeah. very popular event. But you yeah. find some time. Yeah, it is. Right. It's, as long as it's not across from us, I don't know. <laughs> uh, not this. Let's see, I think we, we're. Is it? No, it's the it's the two hours before. Two hours before. Sweet. So you can like so you can go over and Ooh, do the right Franken stuffies and then go to your, your podcast. So that'll work great. <laughs> I'll have to come check it out. You should. You absolutely should. It, it sounds is, so much fun. Yeah, it is all of the stuff. I mean, they make rain sticks um, out of uh, the cardboard tubes. That you get mm-hmm. for, you know, so your toilet paper wrap and, yeah. and all that. So they make them out of that. And that's a really easy. These are all really easy things for the kids to do, but they just really, really appreciate them. So, yeah. yeah. When I saw the the lightsaber one at a Worldcon a few years back, <laughs> I went, okay, how do you do that? Well, you take pool noodles and, oh, my God, that's brilliant. <laughs> you don't have to say anything more. I can take it from there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So we've got a whole bunch of pool noodles. We've got a whole bunch of stuffed animals. We've got a whole bunch of cardboard tubes. <laughs> so, you know. We, we have a lot of family friendly uh, events is yep. because this area, you've, you've got to have family friendly or you're not going to do well. Yep. Um, well, and plus it's still fun. Like everyone thinks, like, oh, it has to be super adult. No, there's right? a reason why many adults watch cartoons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, just looking at the, the you've got the schedule up. So it reminded me of a couple of things. Here, One microphone. of our. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One of our guests um, that uh, I'd like to mention is John Goff. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of people won't have heard of him. However, uh, he is very influential in the RPG industry, so D&D and the like. Um, there's a game out there called Deadlands. Have you guys heard of that one? Yes. But- so what Deadlands is, uh, is it's a weird west. So think Wild Wild West, but add demons and magic. Um, I'm in. <laughs> it, it is it is steampunk and magic and wild west and shootouts and it is one of the coolest games I've ever played. It in and it it is one of the games that gives the best feel for the settings yeah. with its mechanics. Yeah. So most D and D, you roll a d20, you check whether or not you rolled high or low. In Deadlands, you roll handfuls of dice depending on what your uh, what your ability score is will determine what type of dice you use and then your skill determines how many of that die you throw and so the better you do it's like you know like a gambling game you the better you do the better you know the better you score um but its initiative is run with cards you get poker chips that allow you to either use them as xp or to uh they call them fate chips and so you can do things like avoid damage because oh it hit my uh my sheriff's star instead of hitting me in the chest or whatever and it is just this flavorful great game uh i believe the the version that he's going to be uh bringing out and playing is the hell on earth mm-hmm. which takes yep. place in a post apocalyptic version of that world right. so the conf- the Civil War never ended. Uh, there was a stalemate for a few hundred years, but it technically never ended. Um, and when the nuclear ghost rock bombs dropped on the world, and ghost rock is like super coal infused with ghosts to burn even hotter and allows steampunk magic stuff to happen. The ghosts are always hot. Right. <laughs> the ghosts are always hot, yes. Um, it even screams when you burn it, and the clouds look like faces. The smoke looks like faces. Um, anyway, so when the ghost rock infused nuclear bombs dropped on the world, the four horsemen of the apocalypse strode out of the west, and no one knows what's happened east of the Mississippi. <laughs> it is an amazing game. John Goff is one of my idols for having created this game. I love it so much. I cannot talk highly enough about it. So... And he's going to be running the game. Oh, that's going to be awesome. So, yeah. Yes. he's. If you look on the schedule where it says John Goff uh, is running the gaming table, that's what he's running. He's running the game he wrote. Nice. And some of us have actually gotten the opportunity to play when he was running the game. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. So have you played the game? Oh, I own it. <laughs> so... Since it's not he- heavy on the dice throwing mm-hmm. as much, do you survive a lot longer? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So 
Oh, uh, this is going to be a much longer <laughs> podcast now. All right. So, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> one of my favorite characters that I played in it is a gunslinger named Lefty. Um, he was right-handed as a child, but uh, an accident occurred, or rather, uh, he got shot by some bandits and lost his right arm, and so he had to teach himself how to quick draw with his left. Um, I played him for a year and a half, I think, is that yeah. how long that game went on? Yeah. Uh, turns out he was the second fastest gun in Kansas. Learned that one the hard way. Who was the first? Uh, the first is now dead uh, because Tanya's character, uh, Vengeance uh, Wildfire Hamilton, mm-hmm. um, took exception to uh, the guy who killed Lefty. Um, and incinerated him with a uh, soul blast. Look, the guy tried to take his his guns as a and his star as a uh, uh, souvenir. That's he what he figured was a prize. He he laid hands on those irons and I took him out. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. then she and the rest of the party went into the great uh, oh, hunting grounds. the great hunting grounds, retrieved Lefty's soul, brought him back to life. And, uh, I was so mad at him. Informed him that if he ever did anything like that again, he would be. There was no reason for you to do that. She, Dude, she there would was make... no reason for you to do that. I cannot believe that you did. Okay, so here it is. <laughs> he... Okay, wait, wait. Did he, did he at least roll better than once? No. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Oh, no, no. God. Okay, so John is notoriously. I mean, if you get the opportunity to game with him, he will throw the worst rolls in the world. He always does. He always does. It is it's embarrassing. True. I have so, had many people challenge me for worst roles. Uh, no one has taken. Yeah, the he title. always he, he's he's still got the crown. Have we, anyway, have you ever posted on dice shaming? Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> oh yes. yes, we have. Oh yes. But yeah, so so he he gets kidnapped in an attempt to get me and my character into this area where my father is, and I'm going to do like you know final duel down with him. But he's doing the right out of the quick and the dead. It's a it's a shootout contest and he's chained to the well so he can't even leave right totally plagiarized from that right so we get in there we rescue him he's safe okay and he has made it to the last round and there's a guy who is completely fresh and has not been attacked no no (laughs) has not been attached to a well for three days and not really and, and just and he's fine but no, you are fine, and the thing is over, and I killed my dad, and we're all fine now. Uh, your okay. uncle, your dad wasn't there. Well, whatever. Anyway, no, I think it, no, it was your no, uncle. No, it was my uncle. Anyway, so my uncle was there, and, and we're like, we're fine. Everybody's fine now. <laughs> and Lefty decides that he is going to go ahead and finish the contest. The guy challenged me. I'm I not going to b- walk away from that. It didn't matter. It was a fake. Oh. The contest wasn't real. It was never real. I can't believe you did. It was a ruse. For those who can't see, she just, just almost threw the headphones. <laughs> no! It's the loyalty of the, the challenge. I, I, it was, it was, it was the freaking code. necessary. And then, and then he like draws. And I'm like, I cannot believe that you're going to do this. And he drew and he, and he beat him. He I, beat him I, on the draw. Lefty and you know what he rolled draw. to hit him? A one. No, it wasn't a it one. Was one. Uh, it was he, a one. It was a one. He missed him. <laughs> He missed it. Because, as I've said before, my dice hate me. (laughs) And rightfully so. Anyway, so he totally missed it. And so then Todd threw and nailed him. Killed him. Killed him. One shot. I was perfectly healthy. No no hits down. One shot took me out. Yeah, which is one of the things about the game is you actually can go from zero to nothing. You know, in... Or from 100 to nothing. Yeah. (laughs) Sort of, yeah. yeah. Anyway, no matter what, you can just, you can go down instantane. One hit. We had, when in another game, we had a friend of ours get a, a um, He had a jetpack. Yeah, he had a jetpack and blew off his own legs. Oh, so you really can, if you screw oh, yeah. up, you can, you know, it's, yeah. it's Did he not, fly faster? Um, no, 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 he never flew again. No, he never flew again. He what, really was it took like that. A, was it like a launch issue at that point? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like believe he, he got better without legs. You would so. think so, and he actually I, tried. I believe for a while. he got. What happened was, if I remember right, he got shot, and the hit location turned out to be the jet pack. And I ruled that I was running the game that time. And the worst uh, mistake ever. The um, <laughs> no, I ruled that in order not to have it blow up and kill the character, it hit the strap. Which caused the strap to break, and when the jetpack started going off, it swung down and blew off his leg. Yep. And he was like, I've never had 
I've never had something like that happen to my character. Like, <laughs> I've never had a character lose a leg or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, does it grow back? It's like, no. No, <laughs> it's a leg. Species, no this, is, this is the wild, wild west. They didn't our, have that kind of technology. Our mad scientist us. did build him a robot leg, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it did make running weird. Yeah. <laughs> But Did you say there was magic in this? Yes, yes absolutely. Yeah. So there's no magic to grow back legs. No. Uh, no okay, no. so there are two types of magic. I can't in this. believe you did this, man. There are two <laughs> types. Of so the first type. No. Uh, okay. Oh, no, so the I first do. type is uh, hucksters. Now hucksters play cards with demons for power. Okay. Yep. They literally the the mechanic is you draw a poker hand, and if you get high enough to cast the spell, the spell goes off. Okay. If you draw a joker. The red joker is good. It's wild. Um, the black joker is also wild, but comes with a drawback. Okay. And so you might get the power you need, but the demon that you s- struggled with turns out to overpower you and does the spell, but does this other thing to you as well. Okay. Um, so that's the first type of magic. The other type is blesseds. Mm-hmm. And they are, they literally are the holy priestures who get their power from God. Um, but, Regrowing limbs is a little bit beyond the mm-hmm. miracles that your priests can do. Yep. So it, with the first magic, it's possible. <laughs> no, 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 there's no healing. And when, okay. uh, when you're making deals with demons, they don't heal you. Yeah, okay. they don't really care about your feelings or <laughs> your blood loss. Sorry, they're right. There's no chance. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no chance. Uh, Indian shamans also have their own for, their own magic, but it's so close to the. That's yeah, Native American. Yeah, it's Native American holy magic. So not you know, not the dot. Yes, Native Americans. About the country. Uh, First peoples. Yeah. There you uh, go. If you want to be specific. So, yeah, anyway, it's, it's, it's a great system. As you can tell, I love the game. The 20th anniversary edition came out a couple years ago. Um, I managed to get the Kickstarter uh, for it, and I've got the big hardback book that's amazing. I love it. Did um, you bring that for John to sign? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> um, um, reminded just a little late. Oh, yeah. man. Um, but, uh, so you've got the Deadlands, the original Deadlands system. They then put out a, uh, miniatures game called the Great Rail Wars. And then they liked the miniatures game well enough that they created an RPG based off of that called Savage Worlds, which is very open-ended. You can play any setting with the Savage Worlds game. It's kind of cool that way. And then they put the Deadlands setting in the Savage Worlds game. And so you've got, it, it's this weird progression to be well <laughs> then know, regression yeah. back into childhood but yeah. uh pinnacle games is who puts it out it's fantastic i love it um, I, we i'm should so excited have some, about John there should be some copies uh at uh at the con I, but i'm I not so. sure i hope so anyway quick but, another topic so <laughs> actually i was gonna say we we, we instead of last year the two-hour one we'll, we'll wrap it up a little later okay <laughs> and then we'll just sit here and talk for five hours exactly. like we did last time. <laughs> um, I do want to plug one last thing. Yes. Uh, we have an app both for Android and Apple. Uh, Mike, would you like to tell them about the app? Sure. Well, pretty much every, everything you'd ever most likely need is going to be in your pocket and on the app. Not, just find not, it in the App Store? <laughs> um, it's in the App Store. It's in both um, Google Play as well as Apple. What is it it's called? It's just SRFC. 2018. 2018. 2018. Okay. Well, only on the... Oh, on, on Android. The, on, the pl- on the Android one, Apple did not accept 2018. <laughs> okay. And if you do have, if you do download the Apple version, I apologize. Whenever I run an update, like if the schedule's wrong or something, Android takes it immediately. Apple makes me wait seven business days. Oh. So that's the one you're looking for. So, yes. Um, Mike is not terribly happy with Apple at the moment. No. <laughs> no. But on Google Play, it came up like immediately. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's it's very handy, and he he updates it pretty regularly. So, so and you, you plan on keeping it updated in case any changes happen during? The oh yeah. Prompt? So yeah. Yeah. No, awesome. Um, if you download the app, you can actually uh, click the button to receive the push notifications. Nice. So if some if a schedule changes or or you want anything at all when mm-hmm. some yep. your event that you want to go to is going to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can actually save stuff directly to your calendar, so it reminds you. You can nice. share it. But then also, like I said, the push notifications, if the schedule changed, we'll push out a push notification that says, hey, this is now in, in Grand Pavilion instead of at the next stage. Mm-hmm. Right. And My- so, does it need, like, so you can get it all downloaded, especially with the uh, 
Well, you kind of calendar. Do you need constant internet for it? Or nope. Actually, all the content downloads once. If you lose internet, you just it's you still got bonds it. Bonds because you know even though we're small, it's still but gonna actually, no internet. well, there's actually <laughs> free Wi-Fi at the Mac. As long as you're at the Met, well, where everything's at the Met. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's actually free Wi-Fi that the con but pays for. But everybody wants it. That's why, you know, that's why the nice backup. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah. yeah, very much so. And it, it makes it like one of the things that uh, we can do because of the app is everything that would have been in the guidebook is in the app. Only it's all in mm. one small, compact place and you don't have to carry it around. We will still have guidebooks and pocket guides for people to get those. Nice. And coffee cups and water bottles. And, and challenge coins. Buy things. Uh, we don't have an updated challenge coin this uh, year. I know. We, we tried. We tried. But, but unfortunately, things didn't work out to have it this year. But okay. uh, hopefully next year. But there are a couple left over. But they are definitely a first come, first served. I got my last one. Yeah. Last year, so I'm still carrying mine in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are going, is that a con? I was like, no, that's not. <laughs> much, much more nerdy. <laughs> if you want more <laughs> military. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. If you want to buy it, go to booth F1, <laughs> which is right next to the snack bar, yeah. which is where, that's why my booth's there. Nice. So I can yep. just go to the snack bar. Friday night, probably going to be gone, <laughs> so just hurry up. Yep, yep. exactly. Anyway, thanks for having us. Yes, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. So I don't know if you guys remember from last year. Famous last words. Ready? Jump, go. Tango, go. Well, I can't <laughs> I can't believe you actually tried that that shot. That was the stupidest thing you ever could have done. Jonathan? Take naps. Take many naps. <laughs> I went out of order, but take many naps. <laughs> Shower. Shower. Jonathan. Or any suggestions for the guests if Naps. it's their first time? I can go off of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to 